What's up baseball coaches, parents, players. I'm coach Dan Blewett, I'm a former pro pitcher. In today's video, we're gonna talk about stepping off all the do's and don'ts for pitchers. All right, so if you're new here, check out the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. I have tons of, of like these beginner tutorials, deeper dives into lots of different concepts that you don't really find elsewhere on the web. And there's lots of stuff for pitchers of all ages. So thanks for being here and be sure to subscribe. So I, I'm doing this video on stepping off, not because this was like all my exciting uh, you know, concepts to-do list, but rather because when I made a video about all the different ways you can balk, which has been extremely popular, and I'll link to it in the description below, there were a lot of questions about, well, should I do a spin move here? Should I do an inside move there? What should I do if the runner steals early? And the answer to most of those questions are you should step off and figure out what to do next. A lot of times pickoffs are not appropriate for certain happenings that are kind of unexpected and that stepping off is gonna be the common thing to do. That's why I wanna do this video. So let's jump right to it. So number one, I had a bunch of questions in that balk video, which again, I highly suggest you watch um, about throwing to unoccupied bases or throwing when a runner is stealing. So it's a balk if you pick off to second base and there's no runner on second base. So if there's just a runner on first and there's no one on second, I can't do a pick off to second base because the base is unoccupied. However, there's also no good reason that I would ever do that. The only time you would maybe do that is if the runner was stealing. And people have said, well, if a runner's stealing second, why can't I just do a spin move to second? And the answer is that you can, it's legal. It's not a balk because the base, when someone's running there, it's no longer counts as unoccupied. It's not occupied yet, but that rule is sort of off. However, what I've told everyone in that in the comments of that video is that if someone's stealing second base, doing a spin move is not the right thing to do. The thing to do is step off, find that runner, run at him, or throw the ball to the infielder that wants it, probably the shortstop. So in that case, that's the first thing we'll cover. If a runner is stealing and you figure it out or someone yells, step off, step off, he's going step off the rubber, and then you can set your hips, find the runner, run at him, or give the ball to the fielder that wants it. That's what you do when a runner is stealing a base well before the pitch where the pitch is not gonna be delivered, all right? So let's back up a second and talk about the mechanics of stepping off. You can step off the rubber anytime you want. So if you're getting a sign and you don't know, like what it is, you can step off right then, which would be weird. You could come set, immediately step off, you can set, be set for five seconds and step off. Anytime you want, you have the power to step off the rubber. That's a given. So anytime, if you have a bug in your eye, your contact's getting cloudy, you know, you don't know what, you're not on the same page with your catcher, someone yells something, the runner's stealing, those are all the times that you would step off. And so basically what you need to understand is if you're new to the game, and I know I have a lot of international players that watch my videos, which is amazing, I'm, I'm happy to help teach you the game, is when something unexpected happens, stepping off is almost always the thing that you do. So again, that means runner is unexpectedly going, or someone yells something, or the catcher and you are not exactly clear on which pitch you thought you shook to, which has happened to me before and many other players. Anytime you're not sure what to do next, but you've already come set, you can step off or during your flow, if something's not right, say you came set and you look at your outfit and your left fielder is in no man's land. You're like, what in God's name is he doing? You could step off and like look at your coach and be like, what's happening, right? So I don't, I don't mean sh don't show up your outfielder, but I've had that happen before as well, where I was coaching, our pitcher was about to come set, our left fielder was way out of position and I yelled for my pitcher, step off, step off, step off. He stepped off so then I could correct the outfielder because he was just like playing, it was, it was baffling. So anything that goes awry, you can step off. That's the number one thing here. I'll give you one last example. Here's a quick story. Uh, my third year in pro ball, my catcher gave me sort of an ambiguous sign. I thought, like he gave me like one of this, like it was like one, two. I thought it was fastball. He thought I called curveball. I shook, I should have stepped off, but I didn't. And instead I delivered a 92 mile per hour fastball and I looked on the game chart later. I hit him with 92 right in the teardrop of his quad because he thought a curveball was on its way and instead it just went zzz, 
and caught him square, didn't even touch his glove. That kind of stuff could really hurt a catcher. You know, it could end their career. Uh, I'm lucky that he just had the biggest, grossest bruise I'd ever seen. Um, and it was mostly his fault, <laughs> but I should have stepped off, called him out, and clarified what the sign was. You know, that was a miscommunication between both of us. Um, we were just on the wrong page. But any, again, anytime, this is the thing about stepping off. Anytime something weird happens, you're not comfortable as a pitcher, you're not square on what you're supposed to be doing for that pitch or after that pitch, whatever, the, the remedy is to step off the rubber and reset yourself, go through the signs again, talk to a fielder if it, that's what needs to be done, whatever. But stepping off is the remedy for any of the weirdness that happens. You don't want to do a spin move to an unoccupied base. You don't want to do an inside move to an unoccupied base. Those things you could do, but seasoned veteran pitchers never ever do them. I've never spin moved to a base when a runner is stealing second. Never have I ever done that. I've stepped off many times and then gotten rid of it, whatever was the most efficient way to do so. But again, that's the fix, not doing spin moves to random bases, et cetera, all right? So hopefully this video was helpful. Stepping off is a overlooked, kind of just like a basic thing, but it's important. So if you're not always sure what you should do, just remember that pitchers are always in control of the tempo of the game. And if you need to step off for any reason, you can do it. All right, thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Dan. Check out the links in the description and I'll see you in the next video.